Greetings Internet, welcome to Aaron's Plays. In this episode I'll be continuing mission one of Ambush and uh, first off I have to correct an error from the last episode. Dylan, who I've activated and put on here, actually failed the initial perception check. So hence why he set straight and at an angle. So in the awareness check of the first action round, he would have to make a perception check. If he fails that, he would actually still mark, be marked unaware. So let me check. His perception is, I've rolled the dice, but it should be okay. Dylan's perception is three. I've just rolled a zero for him. So he is aware on that first check. So his position still, still stands good on, on here. Um, yeah, I re, re watched through the video and I thought, oops, missed that one. But uh, the die roll has corrected my obvious faux pas. And if you mention anything in the comments on the video, on the prior video, well spotted. Um, anyway, so. I was discussing Ambrose. He's the first one to activate. He can use one of his actions to pass on and get someone else to activate this turn, or anyone that's winning more than two, or, or he could also use an activate to make anyone who's currently unaware, such as Hudson. Um, unfortunately, Gibson is out of his range, because I need a maximum of two two hexes, um, to make them aware for next turn. Because in turn, I keep saying turns and rounds, in round two, Hudson will get to roll again, but his perception is very, very low. So he's, he's, he's still going to be go shrugging his shoulders, going, what, what, what's going on? Uh, so I'm going to use Ambrose's first action to make Hudson aware that there are Germans about. So that will lower him down on this track over here. So then we're looking, there's no one else on this round here. So there's no one here, so it's back to Ambrose. He's, he's armed with a submachine gun, so A range of a submachine gun, or short range of a submachine gun. It's four hexes. So these two Germans are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're twelve hexes away. That that is long range. So he's not going to use his submachine gun to activate that. So. He's quite happy where he is, so he's actually going to use his action now to activate Edwards. So it takes him down now to complete, and Edwards actually will go up to having two actions. Edwards is armed with a rifle, semi-automatic. He's not a good shot though, but he's going to move up to get closer to these two. So, you go into E2. It means I have to do every paragraph I go through, I have to check. So, E2. This does slow it down a little bit, but. None. So nothing happens there. Okay. Oh, I don't want him to be crouching, so actually I should be fine. You're allowed a free stance check if you're not wounded. So his first one is to stand up. Because if you crouch, he's going to move one hex. So E2 is okay. He'll then move into E3. That actually's got 
event. So I'm going to have to use a dice to keep track. He's, he's spent two movement factors so far. All the points. That's an event. Thirteen. S5455. Okay, that was S5 had been what I've been looking at before, but I rubbed that out because that didn't occur. But it has this time. S5455. Okay. Four, five, five. So Edward's being a bit too bold here. Back to that M5 pick. I thought that I might have overridden it. Okay. Every year a soldier within sight of hex M5 must make a PC check. That's because that was a no event over here. Well, I made that mistake. Okay, so every year within sight of that hex. So. Hudson doesn't have sight of it. The guy's just moving hasn't got sight of it, so no one still has sight to that hex. So it's a no event. Oh, I keep circling that five. It's a no event, so I'm rubbing it out again. Okay. Check it first. Right, so it's no event. So because no one can see see there. Okay. So so far Hudson has moved one, two. And we go there into F3. That hex costs, it's a cover hex, no, it only costs one movement point. So that's F3. Nothing happens there. Okay, I'm going to spend a movement point to change his stance. So you get one stance change per turn per round, free of charge. He's now done. So I will move him now on here to show he's had an action. Next up is Bell, Corporal Bell. Is here. Now he's armed with an essence rifle and he's not a bad shot. Should he take a shot or move closer? It's one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's twelve hexes away, which for a It's not a bolt action, it's semi-automatic. It's medium range, so you'd need a four to hit. And there are woods. No, he's actually going to spend his action to ask Dylan, the guy with the automatic rifle, um, I say it's the, the automatic rifle, which we know is a, a Brownings. So he tells Dylan to find the Brownings. So that will use up his action to then get Dylan to effectively have two actions. So Dylan will fire. Aim shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's twelve hex range for the Brownings. That's also a medium range shot. Okay, so that's First of all, it's an aim shot. I have to declare um, that is an aim shot. He's not. He's not moving with this, and he will. Got to check for weapon jam is the first thing. Five percent chance of that. He rolls a twelve. So there's no weapon jam. So again, looking at the chart here. All right. So we are. We're using the 
sort of semi-auto rifle where is it? Automatic rifle. So this is where we get the jamming numbers from. Moving along here, this is where we get the range. So it's 10 to 16 range. Tells me it's medium, and that gives me the number four. That tells me the base chance to hit. Now there's two targets in there. He's targeting, let's say, Q, the first one. He could target both, but then that makes his chance harder to hit with, a, with an automatic weapon. Um, because these hexes are, I presume, they're you know, 10 meters apart or, or whatever. So, so the next thing I look at is the cover type, the Germans in woods. So I'm looking at for woods and he's standing. So it's a minus two. So it takes my basic chance of four down to two. But Dylan's got a weapon skill of one. So it takes it back to three. He needs a three to hit, three or less. He rolls an eight. So it's a miss. Then I've got to check for ammunition. 25%. He rolls 28. So he's obviously getting low on bullets in that uh, magazine, but it doesn't use up them all. So that moves Dylan down on the chart over there. Okay. Right, so I'm now back to, well, any one of these three can activate, it's my choice. So, Edwards has moved closer. Okay. He will now take a shot at the same guy. So the guy on top here is Q. So it's a range of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hexes. So that is still looking at the same so it's a, so that's medium range, so he's on a four. Edwards is a weapon skill of minus one, so it takes it to three, and the woods takes it to a one. A zero or a one. Zero again is always a success. He rolls a one. Well done, Edward. Yay! Okay. So, moving Edwards forward, he gets the bead on this German at a Q and hits him. The effect is an 8. With a semi auto rifle, 8 is incapacitated. Okay. So that German drops, incapacitated, which effectively takes him out of action and no longer a viable target. Okay. Who's shooting Edwards? So we now move Edwards down. So he's completed. And that German Q is actually moved down to the Inactive. All right. So this game is is quite, is quite vicious. Okay. So I'm now going to move Dylan. Sorry, move Dylan. Fire Dylan at P. Okay. So oh no. Last thing I have to check for Edwards is his ammunition. He rolls 62, so he's not out of ammunition. Okay, so now back to Dylan. He'll take that, that shot again at Soldier P. So his basic to hit was, at that range, is medium four. Woods takes it to two. His weapon skill back to three. Because he's plus one. He rolls a two. Good shooting, Dylan. And then the effect, high numbers are good. He rolls a three on the effect. Okay, this is the automatic rifle. With a three, the German is wounded. Okay, so a wounded means he automatically drops to prone.
which sort of makes sense. So he's wounded and prone. All right. Okay, so I'm going to show these as such, which also drops him to complete for this round. And that was Dylan. Oh, got a check for his ammunition. Well, rolls a 74, so that magazine is still not um, finished. But then Dylan now is. Okay. So it just leaves me Fitzpatrick, who's in the same hex as Ambrose. So he's going to make a move. And he moves to not going to crawl so he does a stance change then moves into e3 which we know was that hex which is effectively none because he hasn't got line of sight to it e4 e4 is nothing so that's two movement points so far e5 nothing and f5 which is nothing okay that would cost me a movement point to do it so he's actually standing yes one two three four okay so that's all my guys done, and that completes that action rounds. Because now I just want to do a quick check. Um, so when he, I think when they're wounded, that means they don't get an action that turn, but I want to check that. So let me pause there for a second. Yes, yeah, so a wounded soldier loses all his ac remaining actions for the current round. Okay, so this is now correct. So we're now going to move it into round two. Okay, so the first part is the awareness, and the first one I got it, the only one I've, because Hudson, I moved up into there with the first action from Ambrose so rolling for now for Gibson who's got a perception of two he rolls a two so he is now so that every one of my guys are now aware of the situation all right so we have effectively one German that's wounded and he's now prone so we now the next thing for in round two is we actually roll for an event okay that's six and nine that's 15 so we're moving the paragraph up to 15 No event, okay. Um, after the event, we roll for initiative. Okay, so Germans actually win initiative. Roll nine. So looking at that German that's got a wound, the maximum amount of actions he can have is one. So putting him in the advantage place in here. So you've got the yellow is the advantage. Um, the blue is disadvantage. I roll a three. 
So, Ambrose, the three, he'll get one action. Bell, gets one action. All these guys are on a two. Or three. They're getting two actions, but they potentially panic. Because the number, it's got a red background. So I have to check them. So Fitzpatrick, who I've moved over to here, is out of command. He's out of command here. So he will panic because his value is only, his initiative rating is only two. So I will put him in, in there. Okay, Dylan, he's got an initiative of two. He is within command of Bell, so he's fine. And Edwards, he's within command of Ambrose, so he's fine. So both of those are okay. So yes, keeping within two hexes, rolling that red number, quite important. Okay, and then Gibson and Hudson, the, the dynamic duo. Okay, Gibson, so it was a three, wasn't it? So he potentially panics. He has got an initiative of one. He's got a, he's within command, but his initiative is three. That's a total of four. Gibson is not interested. He panics. Hudson. Hudson's also got an initiative of one, but he's within command range of Sergeant Ambrose. Ambrose is sufficiently capable enough to make, keep Hudson in track. Hudson activates... Um, in there. So that's all ready for action round two. Okay, moving on. So, over to Ambrose, Sergeant Ambrose. Okay. He's going to move forward. He wants to get Fitzpatrick into command. He's only got one action. So he'll move. Uh, he'll stand. Free change. Move into D3. There's no event marker in there, so I do need to check it. None. So that's for two movement points. And then moves into D4 for four movement points, which is also nothing, nothing untoward happens there. So I'm now going to mark these so I know he's done and he's complete. Next up, that was incorrect. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, got to stop making these mistakes. Okay, take him back. We have guys here that have got two actions. Two turns. Right, okay, so we're at Dylan. Okay. Well, he's going to move. So you're consciously aware that this, this, something's going to happen here. It keeps hinting at that. <laughs> Do I want to get line of sight to that hex is the question, isn't it? Well, Dylan stands up. Moves into... This hex here, which has got the word no event on it, so I don't need to check. So that's G2. So that's one movement point. H2, two movement points. So H2. Says event. That's 19. 
Not even in the event. There's none. Okay. H3. Three movement points. Okay. So that's got an S2295, but I've already had S2, so I can ignore that. At which point Dylan then crouches down. Okay. Over to Edwards. So I'm moving this moving from cover to cover. Edwards is part of the assault team. So He'll stand up. That's free. Then moves into F4. It's an event. Six. S5455, we've had. Ah, right, that's that S5 one. 455, that looks familiar. Right, does anyone have line of sight to this hex? I think Fitzpatrick might do. He does. So that event now does come into effect. So I'm circling that S5. Sighting. I'm now going back to 455. I think it's about the fourth time. 455. So every US soldier within sight of hex M5 must make a PC check at minus two. Right. So I think it's only literally Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's going through the woods. Nobody else has. No. So it's literally Fitzpatrick. Now Fitzpatrick has got. Perception of three. So it's not the the best, but and this is at minus four five five, I think it was at minus two. Seven temperatures five, so he fails. If all fail, so which is the case, all fail because there's only one. If all fail, C three three eight. Okay, three three eight. Three S5, activate German 34 in hex M5. So there is a German there. Okay, activate German 34 M5. Let me get him out. Okay, so the new guy, German car 34, is an officer. He got, I gain a victory point for him, as I do for, for all the other ones I've activated so far, but I gain a Bonus of plus two if I actually capture him. He's armed with a machine pistol and a Luger. His initiative is four, perception six. Got a skill of one, he's actually very good. Also says if German 34 is killed or incapacitated or captured, put condition four into effect. So if I take, if I take him out, it alerts or raises the German alert level to maximum that the scenario can. Now, he's been activated whilst we're in action rounds. So there's a special procedure for him. Okay. Um, it didn't specify about how many actual turns he's got. So it says if the activation paragraph did not specify that the German receives two turns, which it didn't, then roll a new German action number and place the newly activated German AR in the indicate space. Again, using the current advantage disadvantage. So the current is, uh, the Germans actually have advantage. So this is one of the rare t instances where this action number is re-rolled. So the German activation number, which was zero, has now moved to four. He's got a initiative rating of four, so I've got to find four on the advantage column. All right, he has one turn. 
click OK. And at the present moment, I gain a VP. That takes me up to actually five VPs at the present moment. So I've barely moved on at the board here, and I've got five VPs because we've had. That was one for him, two, three, one for him. So it should be four. How do I get to five? Unless I. Yeah, I, I marked it twice. I marked it, then talked about it, and then. Yeah, so I've got four VPs. Four out of 13. One, two, three, four. Okay. So what to do now? So that was during. Fitz. No, Edward's turn. He's moved three movement points so far. Yes, okay. Where is he? Yeah, I've got to keep a, a, a side note of how many movement points these guys move. Because going back and forth between the paragraphs. Oh dear. Um, yeah, he's moved three. I think he was an E2. I think I'm going to have him crouch now. Yeah, I've got to keep a closer track on movement points after I check these paragraphs. I say it's a learning experience. I'm learning, so I need to get a D6, because the game uses D10, get a D6 and use that to keep track of movement points expended if I have to go and check paragraphs and set guys up and such forth. Yeah, brain matter is not as good as it was 20 years ago to remember little details like that. Okay, so that concludes Edward's activation. So we now we're moving down to here. All right, which then brings us on to this row, and that means that the German officer activates. We know that they're on action shit four, so I now refer to his card. Go on a four. We're in condition three. So. Nine paragraph nine three. So following on here again. Okay, so the die roll is the activation number, which we know is four. Okay, and then condition is three. It tells me to look at paragraph nine one three to see what he's up to. Nine one three. Active US soldier occupies hex T8. T802. T8. That's the building over here. There isn't one. If three or more German soldiers have been killed, incapacitated or captured, crawl into hex N5. Go to condition 4. That doesn't apply because there's only one German that's been killed, one incapacitated or captured. So that doesn't apply. So it then says C802. However, it might be an errata on that because I've got previous owner has put an R next to it. So I better check. Well, I've just referred to the move out booklet and it reads exactly the same. So I don't know why the previous owner of this had put an R next to it, but there we go. So it's telling me it's giving me three instructions. If one's available, he takes that one. It's not. If two's available, it's not. Three, it says C802. So that's where I go. 802. It's telling me to crouch. He's already crouching. Then could at best fire at closest target. Four prone after fire if free stance change available. Okay, so remember everyone's allowed a free stance if they're not wounded, so he hasn't used his stance because he's already crouching. If he'd been prone or standing, he'd have used his free 
starts to change to crouch, but he's already crouching, so he gets to fire. So then it says best fire. To best fire at closest target. So that's a definition. So there's best fire, easiest shots, or, or whatever. So what does it define as best fire? Well, it says best fire, so that'll be either aimed or snapped, so you can use aimed. At closest target, well, yeah, I think he's only actually got one target, and that's Fitzpatrick, wasn't it? Because that was the guy that activated him. Because he can't see Edwards, so he'll fire at Fitzpatrick. Now, he's armed with a machine pistol. I Do I check for jamming? I don't think I check for jamming for... Oh, no, I do check for jamming. I don't check for ammo for the Germans. So he's armed with a machine pistol. Okay, 5% chance of jamming. 55, no, he's fine on that. Okay, so the range is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 hex range. Okay, so that puts with a machine pistol. He's at medium range. 10 hexes have been long. So medium range. So he's a four to hit Fitzpatrick. He has got a weapon skill of plus one, so that makes it a five. Now Fitzpatrick is standing in cover. There's no other cover it's going through, is there? It's going through this cover hex there. This doesn't seem to affect it. It's not like um, ASL or Combat Command, you've got hindrance. No, it doesn't seem to affect it. So he's got a five. Four for range. Five, so well, I mean, it's a, that's a, it's a good chance of a hit. He rolls a zero. That is a hit with a machine pistol. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Then the damage on Fitzpatrick. German rolls a seven. That's my second guy down. He's incapacitated. Okay, that's not nice. Okay. At least you're not dead, but um, hmm. And then he had a free change, so he now changes to prone. That was the last instruction of 802. Crouch, then conduct best fire at closest target. Done. Full, full prone after fire if free stance change is available, which it was. So that then goes down. He's done for the, for the round. So my only question about that was this cover. But he rolled a zero anyway, so... It was a hindrance, or was it a hindrance? Doesn't seem to, to have been. So, a hindrance doesn't seem to be in, a, in effect in this game. Mm. And the next up, we have the other German, German P. Okay, so looking at German P, so let's look at his card here. So, we are with action die roll of four. And condition three, look at paragraph 808. 808. If no active target in sight, crouch. Or there's plenty of active targets in sight. If one or two active targets in sight, no, there's a bit more than that, there's a whole, the whole of our squads in sight. If three or more active targets in sight, full pro. In other words, he stays hugging the dirt. That's good. You stay down there, boy. Blimey. You're wounded. 
that completes his action. Right, okay, so we now go on to this row here. And we start at Ambrose. What to do? Been involved in a firefight now. Especially that officer, he's, he's nasty. We might have to get across here to try and take him out because to get into this area, I mean, yeah, we're, we're limited on who's got sight. Dylan can't see him, my most effective shot so far. Who else is good on the gun? Hudson? No. Gibson. Snapshot, that means he'll get half his movement. He won't get to the line of sight though. So no. Yeah, because Ambrose would have to move to round about here and hopefully get the next action. So he won't. So Ambrose will move. And he will move into here for two. Which is D3, as far as I remember, I've got to check it again. Um, as far as I remember, there was, no, there was nothing, but condition hasn't changed. No, nothing. Then he will move into that's two movement points D4 for four movement points. Nothing. And then he'll do his free stance change, he'll change, change to crouch. Okay, that completes him. Next up we have Bell, Corporal Bell. He can't get a snapshot off on that. So he'll move. So he'll do his free stance. G2, that's fine, that's one, two into G3, that's nothing as well, and then into here for four, to be with Dylan, for three, so it's one, two, three, and then he'll do a change of stance to crouch as well. Now I can choose the order I want to do Dylan or Fitzpatrick, uh, so Edwards. Now if Edwards moves two. Okay, so we'll stand Edwards up, free change. We're gonna move and shoot. He will move into here for one. Change his stance for two to crouch and then we'll take a shot at the prone German officer. So that's two. So this will be a snapshot. I don't think Edwards has got much hope on this. Edwards has got a, he's a minus one as well. Okay, not a good shot, but let's have a look. So he's taking that shot. Um, chance of jamming on a snapshot is increased to 10%. We got 73, so he doesn't jam the weapon. The range, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is medium range for the semi-auto rifle. So that's a four. His minus one weapon skill is three. It's a snapshot, oh dear. That takes it down by, a, I think, another two. Yeah, it takes it to a one. And this guy's lying prone in the woods. I need a zero. Or a one. <laughs> Good try, Edwards. At least you're there with 
Fitzpatrick. Okay. That's Dylan. Who's with now? He could get a snapshot off as well at close range. So let's do this. So stands up for three, moves here into I4 for one. So he spent one movement point. Let's put that there. Spent one movement point. Okay, and we're checking I4. I really forgot, we've got to check paragraphs before I get the, the officer. Right, so I4 tells me to check sighting two. I think we've already had sighting two. We have, so I don't have to check any further. Okay. So that's one movement point. He now moves in here for two movement points. Ouch. Okay. He's going Rambo then, isn't he? He's standing there with the Brownings and just firing at this prone German. So, Dylan, with the, the Brownings, it's a snapshot, so it's a 10% chance to jam the gun. He rolls 84, so it doesn't jam. Um, at a range of one, two, three, four hexes, that is short range, the so basic of five. Dylan's got plus one, so that's six. However, this guy's lying prone in woods. Takes it minus four. And it's step fire. That's minus six. That's a zero. Okay, I thought it might be better than that. Roll to five. No effect. Um, should have checked ammo. I need to take also the previous guy's ammo. So let's take Dylan's ammo. He rolls 35, so he hasn't run out. And then Edward's ammo is also 25%. Actual Edwards should use up some ammo. So what that means is I just cross off an ammo box in their stat sheet. So there we go, Edwards just cross that off. So he's still got two lots of ammo left. Okay, so that's Dylan done. So that now brings me to Hudson the hero. Okay. He's going to move, so I stand him up, two in there, four to there. Oh, actually he's only got three movement points, isn't he? Movement point allowance is three. FPA three. That's what that means. Yes, he's only got three movement points. <laughs> so... He'll be going, blimey. All right then, E4 for one. Let me pair it up and put. No activation, E5 for two. and then E6 3 okay. none of those cause anything to happen right I'm going to straighten all these chaps out they're all, all activated Gibson does nothing because he he panicked 
All right, so that's the end of action round two. Action round three. Okay, so following the sequence, all my guys are aware now. So we'd have to roll, do the awareness phase. So we do the event phase though. Roll two dice and it becomes, it's a four. So looking at this thing again. Tells me to look at paragraph 18. Paragraph 18. One German weapon fired in the previous round is out of ammo. If more than one German weapon was fired last round, determine which one is out of ammo at random. Okay, so there was only one weapon that fired last time, that was the machine pistol. He's out of ammo. That's useful. So he's now using his machine um, his Luger rather than his machine pistol. Alright, is there an out of ammo marker? Doesn't appear to be. Well, it's jammed, but it doesn't appear to be an ammo marker. So I will just put a counter on him. All right. Okay, that's useful. Um, next up is. Initiative. Germans roll a four. Americans roll a four. Oh, what is this equal? Didn't say. I have to check, won't I? If the dice are equal, the advantage goes to the Germans. But I use. The, num the, the numbers that rolled there for the positioning on this track over here. Okay, so the German with an initiative of four, roll of four, he's got an advantage, he's fine, he goes there, uh, he gets one turn. Ambrose with a four, he gets one turn. Bell with a four, he gets one turn. Dylan with a four gets one turn. Edwards, well, they both have the same. All right. Gibson with a four. He potentially has two turns, but with, let's say, shock, um, panic. Right. Gibson himself has got a rating of one. And He's within two hexes of Bell, but Bell's only got an initiative of three. That's four. That's not good enough. Gibson panics. Hudson. He's also in this bracket here. Um, he's within two hexes of Ambrose. He doesn't panic. Hudson's fine. So it was Fitzpatrick, wasn't it? Yeah. That's and then Soldier P, he rolled a four for advantage. He's up there. He's got two actions. It says panic. I don't think, do the Germans panic? I think that might be a paragraph thing, but I will check. No, Germans only panic if the number cut appears in the panic number. They don't go by these little red numbers in here. So, Soldier P does not panic. So after the action marker placement, we then look at the German action number, which for this turn is, sorry, round is an eight. So that will modify what paragraphs we'll be looking at for them. And therefore, we start up here. 
with Soldier P. That's the one that's prone and wounded. So, Soldier P, we activation number was 8. Condition is, is 801. So, we're looking at paragraph 801 for him. Crouch, then conduct best fire at easiest turn. Ah, wait a minute. Stop! Rewind. He's wounded. Maximum amount of actions he can have is one. Okay. Do you like the rewind sound? Okay. All right. Going back then. So we're up to this chap, Hudson. He's got two turns. So what's he actually good at? Not a lot. He's slow. But he has got two turns. Um, okay, I'm going to start moving him down through this brush. He's got three movement points. Brush costs how much to do through? Well, I have to take Check the terrain effects chart. Ugh. Brush does cost two. Okay, let's risk one hex of clear. That's F6. So that's one. What does I say? F6. That says sighting five, but we've had sighting five, haven't we? Yes, so nothing additional happens. Okay, so that's one. F7, two, three. And I've got to check this before I change his crouch. That's none. He then will have his free stance change. That's Hudson done. Him down into there. We're now looking at Hosifer, who's currently prone. Okay, so and his machine pistol, thankfully, is out of ammo. ammo. So he is stance is oh eight. He goes to paragraph. 835 because we're condition 3. 835. Let's see what this guy's doing. 835. Alright, again, bullet points. If an active German within two hexes, give a turn. Well, there is no active German, there's a kill and action one. If no other active Germans within two hexes, conduct 801. Alright. 801. Crouch, then conduct best fire at easiest target. Fall prone after fire if free stance change available. Well, well, he's currently prone. So he becomes crouched. Easiest target would be Dylan. Okay, so with his Luger. Alright, so first of all we have to check jam. It doesn't jam. And it's medium range for the Luger. Four hexes, one, two, three, four hexes yet. So that's a four. He's got plus one weapon skill, five. Dylan, unfortunately, was still standing. And the cover doesn't make any difference if you're standing. Uh, that was a bit risky, wasn't it? Okay. Ooh, not good. Because there's no modifier. So it's a five for the Luger. Cocktail out 
Re roll that. Right, he rolls a two. That's a hit. Pistol with a two. He then rolls a one. He makes Dylan panic. Okay. So that drops Dylan on the chart here to panic. Does it make him go prone or anything as well? If there's a sudden panic or anything like that. It's not a wound, it's not an incapacitation panic. Panic soldier falls prone at the end of the round if normal, not already prone. So in other words, he's actually frozen. Like, oh, he shot back. Okay. And then it says the general has used a free stance change, so he can't change back to prone. So he's complete. Next up is Soldier P. He's currently prone. Soldier P, for action number eight, addition says he's looking at 801. It says crouch, then you conduct best fire at easiest target. Full prone after fire if free stars change available. Okay, so because he's wounded, he can go into a crouch. So he comes out of prone, but that's not a free change. So this will be an actual oh, the wounded markers. Maybe he stays wounded. Um, yeah, it's not a free change. So it's costing him movement points to do that. With a cost of movement points, that means that this would not be an aimed fire, it'd be a snap fire. Easiest target. And he is armed with a rifle. So Dylan is standing and he's the closest. So yeah, it's gonna be Dylan. We still oh, under shot panic. Right. So Soldier P, he's got a weapon skill of minus two. So the range is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hex range. Let's check his weapon. He rolls 31, so it doesn't jam. Seven hex range with a bolt action rifle. That's medium range, so there's a basic to hit of four. However, Cover's not helping because I'm standing. But it's snap fire, minus two. And it's another minus one because he's wounded, so it's minus three. So net minus three on a four. And what's his weapon skill? Sort of P. Oh, it's minus two. So he needs a zero to hit. He rolls a seven, no effect. And he stays as he is, which is crouching and wounded. Propping his bolt action up on the, on the tree, leads onto it, changes the bullet. Ding. That drops that down now to complete. So um, back to Ambrose. Two guys down. One from each team. Not good. Not good. Okay, so Ambrose stands. I will move. So it's one. Been through that hex before. Two. Been through that hex before. Three four, and that is E seven. If the condition had changed, those hexes I'd have to really check again. 
but um, let's say E7 to 9. Yes, E7, 9. Okay, so it's Ambrose completed. Next up is Corporal Bell. You can't give Dylan an action, Dylan is panicked. I don't like this wounded chap taking shots at me. Well, we stay out of action, but wounded, he can still do something. So, um, yeah. Bell hasn't got a, a better weapon skill. He's got a semi-automatic, so he's going to fire at the wounded chap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's a medium range shot with a semi-automatic. Got a check for jam. 5%. That was 45, no jam. Then, okay, so basic to hit is four. Crouching inner woods. Minus three takes it to a one. I need a one. Nothing else. Oh, well, it's another target, isn't it? Um, no, it's not an extra target. So I need a one. I roll a seven, so that's a miss. So, wild shots. I will stay crouched. Crouched. Edwards, so that's over here. He needs to get closer. So he'll stand. Move it to G6. For one. I need to go to paragraph three or four. Okay. Paragraph book three, four, four. Right. If S two and S five have occurred, no event. Um S2 and S5 had have occurred, sorry, have occurred, so there's no event there. Okay, so we spent one, two, I think we'll crouch at that point. Hudson. Okay, he'll stand. This is free change. Move into this hex here, which is G8. S2 again, so it's no event, and they will crouch, which costs him a movement point. That's his three. So that completes that action round. Everyone's gone. Okay, again, I'm consciously aware of how long this is taking. So we are in the middle of a, a, a firefight, and I'm going to pause this video to be continued in the next. Um, hope you enjoy what you're seeing. It does take a little bit of time going through those paragraphs, but the game is speeding up uh, as I'm, I'm getting more familiar. I'm finding less need to ask questions. Um, 
Oh, it's tough. It's deadly. Uh, so I'm two guys incapacitated. So my squad's down to six men. And I'm being held up by a wounded soldier and an officer whose weapon's jammed. So yeah, enjoying it. I like the decisions I have to make. Um, so, well, we'll see what happens in the next action round in the next video. Until that time, bye for now.